Abandoned buildings have their own charm, be it the decayed rusting fixtures and windows, or the wrecked structure of the walls, they all have a story to tell. These buildings act as a mirror to the human soul, stubborn and enduring the test of time. The mystery behind the broken hinge sparks a world of imagination. If only those walls could speak and unveil the bizarre tales hidden beneath the rubble. This story is about one such abandoned building, an old high school in Illinois called Centralia High School. The building had been abandoned for decades, until the year 2019 when it was bought to be renewed and built into a church. During this quest of renovating the old building, one of the plumbers came across something straight out of a mystery novel. From the outside, it looks like nothing unusual, just an old building. But once we step inside Centralia High School, we are greeted by a dreary scene. The broken window glasses let in scattered sunlight to the dark, narrow corridors, which were once buzzing by the laughter and chatter of children. The dismantled benches and boards lay in a corner of the empty classrooms covered in ashes. The school didn't always look the same. Centralia High School was one of the most renowned schools in town back in the 1940s. But all good things come to an end. And for this school, it was the modern era, with smart classes making way into the education system. Centralia High School found it a little difficult to keep up with the trends. As predicted, parents began to enroll their students in modern, equipped schools with the latest technology and facilities. This resulted in Centralia High School falling short on students, which ultimately led to immediate bankruptcy. Since then, the gates of the school have remained closed. The building has been abandoned for decades now, and as a result, it has given birth to a lot of rumors. The most obvious one was that the school building is haunted by the ghost of a girl who committed suicide on the second floor. While most people do not believe such stories, there are always exceptions. The current owners of the building have been looking for buyers for a while now, but unfortunately nobody came forward with any offers. The building has been showcasing a for sale sign for years. The owner has lost all hope of ever finding any takers because people probably believe the rumors about the building being haunted. Seth Boltzell, a pastor for the City Hope Church, had been making queries about the ownership of the abandoned high school. Boltzell must have found the price of the building to be perfect, because at the beginning of the year 2019, he made the purchase. Boltzell had plans of letting the abandoned building give back to the society in the best way possible. He wanted to convert the building into a City Hope community outreach center and church. That way the abandoned high school will find a way to be alive and fight with people again. Converting a school into a church does not happen in one day while Bartzell didn't share his dream with anyone. He did need help to make it come true. He started the process of hiring workers for renovating the building and altering its structure into a church. 
but this process was more challenging than he had assumed. Bozel assumed he will have to select workers based on their skills, but there was one factor that he forgot about. Every worker kept rejecting to work for the haunted high school. The pastor was in a really difficult situation. Making the purchase would not be fruitful unless he could successfully renovate the building. After a long, tedious process, Boltzell finally managed to gather a team of workers willing to work on the building and now it was time to get to work. The team consisted of carpenters, plumbers and construction laborers. The plumbers were working their way around the restroom, taking it apart slowly and putting it back together, better than before. They were on their last few pieces of fitting now. When one of the plumbers found himself struggling to remove a van behind a toilet seat, it seemed like a weight of some kind was pressing on it, and the pressure behind it was making it hard for him to take it out. The plumber took out his bag of tools and began to crack the areas round in the vent. At first, it felt like it won't work, but after struggling with the vent for a few minutes, the plumber managed to take it out. And what followed next was something he could not have foreseen. As soon as the vent came out, a whole load of debris came falling from the vent. The plumber was confused about how so much junk could collect behind the vents. He began to push the fallen rubble aside when his eyes caught sight of something. Turns out, the wreckage was not trash after all and he may have just discovered something which will make the headlines. The plumber showed the discovery to the pastor and they began examining the contents together. He had managed to find not one not two, but an entire collection of 15 wallets inside the vent. Boltzell realized that the wallets have remained tucked away inside that vent, untouched for more than half a century. Boltzell began to open the wallets and check the insides. The contents consist of identification cards and old photographs. Turns out, they belonged to the girl studying at Centralia High School in the 1940s. But what were they doing behind the vent in the restroom? Bolza made a wild guess, assuming the worst. All the wallets were empty on cash, which can only mean one thing. They were stolen. The thief took out the cash and stacked the wallets behind the vent, leaving behind their IDs and photographs. The wallets were made of leather and mostly faded and tattered. After all this time, but given everything, they were still in a decent state. Boltzell wanted to return these wallets to their owners, but it was not as easy as it sounds. He decided to take out the IDs and photos from each wallet and go through the details. Turns out, most of these photos were from 1945 or 1946. This means that most of the owners may not even be alive today. Bolzel decided that the best way to reach out to people will be through social media platforms. So he pulled out a Facebook post, putting in the details about the incident along with a list of names from the ID cards and a picture of the stolen wallets. He watched in astonishment as the likes and shares started to roll in. 
people were commenting and sharing the news to help him find the family or a relative of the owner. Despite providing such clear identification details and people sharing the posts thousands of times, the results of the social media search were not proven to be effective. Nobody was able to find any of the owners who were alive nor were they able to find any relative. Until one day, when a person contacted Batsel regarding a name on his list. The user informed the pastor that she is related to Betty June Sisson, a name on Boltswell's list. Betty lived in Centralia and attended the now diminished high school where these wallets were found. She graduated back in 1947 and now she is an 89 years old woman. Betty went ahead to examine the contents on the inside. Aside from slight surface damage, the contents were in a decent condition. They were clear enough for Betty to recognize them. The very first picture is of a little girl and a boy, which as Betty told the reporter, that's me with a little boy by the name of Jimmy Kane, and I had a crush on him. I must have been about in the third grade or fourth. The wallet also contained a photo of Betty's brother who joined the army during the Second World War and passed away. The photo meant so much to Betty. Her eyes were glistening with tears. She didn't have any pictures of him so for her. This was worth a million dollar treasure. The wallet also contained photos of her family members but the process of discovering personal items didn't end at photos only. Betty also found her social security card, which she remembered searching for back in the 1940s, expect she didn't know it was in her wallet, which had already been stolen by then. After hearing about Betty's story, the post blew up on multiple social media platforms. People were appreciating the effort made by the pastor and talking about what an amazing discovery it was. A user suggested these wallets could be claimed by a museum if no other honor is found. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe.